Alright, it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the air is cool. It's been a little while since I've done a video talking about plants and um, so I thought today what we would do is pick something really simple and go off on a little wander and just find some flowers and we'll just spend some time looking at them. So let's go check it out. There's just something I really love about the simplicity of going out and finding a flower and knowing that all you really have to do is count the petals. You know, this little pink friend we have here. And this is one of the, the simplest things that you can do when you find a flower or like a plant that's in flower. And really, I'm a huge fan of awareness techniques that don't require you to have any sort of foreknowledge or, um, you know, book learning required in order for you to actually use your eyes to learn. All you have to do is count the petals. One, two, three, four, five. And just by doing that, I mean, when I first learned this and realized that I could go out and learn about plants just by counting the petals, it's hard to describe exactly what it did for me, but it just, I realized that it, it made plants a lot more simple. Um, because rather than having to have a whole bunch of prior understanding, it gave me a way to start seeing differences between flowers, really obvious differences. I mean, when I was younger, I never realized that some flowers have five petals, some flowers have four petals, uh, some flowers have three petals, and that it, it actually tells you something about the plant when you count the petals. This, this plant with the pink flowers will always have five petals. It's not like some of them have four and, and some of them have five. Like every flower that you find that belongs to this plant will have five petals. And so it gives you a consistency within the species, even if you don't know what the species is. This is really the key mindset that I want to share in this video. If you take this mindset and you use this when you find plants, it will really change the way that you look at things just because it gives you a, a simple focus, something to look at, something to train your eyes on, and it's so easy. You know, it just gets you out of your head and helps you learn about the natural world. So just count the petals and notice how much more closely you can actually see the plant. Another thing that you learn is some flowers come in groups and so you know when I was first starting to do this and you know really intentionally going around and finding flowers and um, counting the petals one of the things that I realized is that you see something like this and I, I used to think that this whole thing was a flower because it kind of looks that way when you're looking at it from a distance. When you really get up close you realize that this flower is actually made of a whole bunch of smaller flowers and if you want to count the petals, we need to find an individual example. So right there at the tip of my thumb, that is actually one flower. And this bundle of white is actually made up of, I don't know, maybe 25 different flowers all growing together in a clump. When you first start learning about plants, this kind of stuff is not necessarily obvious. And, you know, really one of the hardest things about nature observation is just getting yourself to slow down enough to actually see what's there and um, it's one of the reasons why I think counting which really requires very little thought at all it brings a focus to our awareness where we can then start to see things in a new way and actually see things for what they are so here we have an echinacea growing in my garden and this is an interesting thing like you might be tempted to look at this and and you know, say this is a petal, this is a petal, that's a petal, that's a petal. And an interesting thing about echinacea and, and uh, you know, flowers in the sunflower or daisy family that, that have this sort of appearance, they actually have what's called a composite flower. And if we look at these um, colorful petals here, what you actually start to see is that there are actually um, multiple sections to it. And I don't exactly know how all the specifics of this work, but, but botanically, this right here, 
this whole thing that appears to be one petal is actually one flower with unified petals. And so this again is a bunch of flowers all growing together and to count the uh, petals on them we have to be able to find a single flower which is this part right here. So one thing to notice when you're uh, counting petals is flowers like this where where they come in clumps and you know it's like all over the plant um, this golden rod here what I'm finding on this one one two three four five six seven I'm seeing seven on this one and one two three four five six seven eight on this one so sometimes when when the flowers are really small it's it and if they have a lot of petals um, the more petals a flower has, the more challenging it's going to be to get a, an accurate number. Um, just because when they're so small like this, it's it's hard to tell. Some of them might have fallen off, um, and and you need to find, uh, you know, a flower that's a, a complete specimen. Here we go. This one looks relatively complete. And so when I get on this one. I found one that has 10 petals and it looks, I think they're all intact here. Um, it is hard to tell, but the important thing is that it gets you to look closer. You know, that's always the most important thing. And as long as you're getting your hands in the dirt and you're getting your, your eyes to look closer and you're observing things, that's all that it's about you know it's it's getting you out of your head and getting you into nature for a little while it's letting you just sort of forget about yourself and focus your awareness on on something in the natural world and um you know we could probably spend i've been sitting with this plant for like five minutes now trying to find a a complete specimen of the flower you know and i can go back and i can i can look up more about goldenrod and find out more about how many petals they have and um, all that kind of stuff you can you can adjust and refine and improve your knowledge as time goes on so don't worry about getting it right um, when you're in the field just enjoy the experience and um, and and keep learning and and don't get don't get overly confident but don't uh, don't be too hard on yourself either um, if uh, you know if you can't quite figure things out on the first try there's always other days when you can come back and the more that you do this the more times you repeat it and try it again in different situations, in different seasons, with different types of flowers, um, the easier it gets and the, and the more um, the more skilled you get with it and the more results you get. When you start getting out to observe flowers and do some petal counting, I would highly recommend starting with the big flowers, um, like these evening primrose right here. Um, and we can just, it's so easy to see. I mean, there's four petals on this one. And if you look right here, here's another one. It's got four petals. And um, look, you can see the, the dew, the morning dew on these still. Um, that's really cool. The other thing that I love about this is how it, um, it teaches us about the interactions with animals and insects and that kind of stuff. And we can see this ladybug hanging out on the evening primrose as well and um, and and some of these are actually these are seed pods so this plant is actually almost done flowering um, so I want to try and get a few more examples so I think let's go for a little walk and um, we'll move to a different area and hopefully find um, some more examples one of the things I'm noticing is I'm in you know mid to late summer right now and a lot of the flowers that are out right now are in the sunflower family or the daisy family um, the uh, the asters and um, they all have that kind of composite flowers and so you look at like say an, a new england aster with their with their purple flowers and a lot of the flowers that are out right now um, are these clusters of very tiny flowers with numerous petals and those ones are tricky. So um, like what I was saying before, I, I recommend starting with um, the flowers that are, that are easy. Um, you know, a, a, like larger, the larger the flower, the easier it's gonna be. 
and um, the, the less number of petals there are, the easier it's going to be. So focus on the ones that have like, you know, three, four, five petals um, in like large flowers and, and uh, that'll get your eye trained up on it. And then you probably want to study composite flowers like separately um, because they just have, uh, they just work differently. Uh, you know, it's just a different sort of thing. And so, um, yeah, let's go, let's go wander a little bit more and see what else we can find. Here we are in a different area and uh, there's a nice easy example of uh, what you might find when you're out looking for flowers and we can very easily count them, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, there's consistency, I mean it is a, a clump of flowers, um, but we can find the individual flower and the individual petals are quite easy to see and so this is a great example of uh, exactly the kind of thing you can you can look for to help um, get your eyes trained up on this and what I find is that a lot of it is just about building building habit you know just getting yourself used to when you see a flower and you have the opportunity to count the petals just do it and you know when you first try um, it takes a little bit of focus, you know, you have to, because you just have to remember to do it. But once you've done it a few times, then it becomes just a normal part of your awareness. And here we are at the tail end of St. John's wort season. Um, we can count these ones pretty easily. Five petals. And um, one of the cool things is um, these are in the rose family. And um, all, all flowers in the rose family have five petals. But the other thing that they have is these um, stamens that stick out and, you know, just numerous stamens um, that they always kind of stand out to me in the rose family. You know, I talked in a previous video about finding a quiet mind and, um, you know, that the idea with all of this stuff is not to give you, uh, not to try and give yourself more things to think about, you know? and. And really, I, I'm a strong believer in keeping it as simple as possible, that if you can find simple things that bring you um, great results, uh, you know, help the, anything that you can do to look closer and um, understand deeper and, and find patterns, um, the more simple that you can make that, the better. And the reason for that is when, when you get outside, if you want to make good observations, you cannot be up in your head. You can't be thinking about all kinds of stuff and have a really busy mind and what what could be more simple than just counting petals you know um, and it gives you a focus it gets you out of your head but it also doesn't doesn't create busyness in your mind you know it's like just find a flower and one two three four five and um, and instantly you're seeing it a little more clearly you know before you count the petals you may be um, weren't even aware uh, that that this flower has four petals and that flower has five. After you count them, instantly you have that awareness. And um, over time, as you do this with lots of different flowers and you start to see different patterns, it really, um, it's hard to describe because it's so subtle, but it really does make a difference to how you understand and appreciate and, and observe and um, start to make sense of all the different um, plants and, and patterns that you find out in nature. So um, really encourage you to, to do this, you know, go out and, and set that intention, you know. We, you, can, you can do this in a, in a really simple way. Just be like, I'm, I'm gonna go out for a plant walk and my only intention on this plant walk is to find some flowers and count their petals. And it gives you a focus, it gives you something to you know, drive your attention. And while you're out there, you will see so many other things too, you know, because it, it, you know, as soon as you get out of your head and you start looking at nature with that kind of, that question, um, how many, how many petals can I count here? Uh, then you start to see the ladybugs and you start to see um, the, the patterns of plants. Like, you know, you go to one area and there's tons of flowers and in a different, and you go to a different area and there's like no flowers. And that kind of stuff starts to stand out um, in a very simple kind of way. Oh, there's a, there's a great blue heron. 
I hope you enjoyed coming on this wander with me today. I had a lot of fun and I hope you found it uh, interesting to, to uh, look at flowers in this, in this different sort of perspective. And um, yeah, let me know what you discover out there. I think that's all I want to share today. So um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.